Let's move on to Mike. Mike's question. I bought ARKK December 17th, 135 put for 1943 and sold the ARKK December 17th, 132 put for 1671. We're in a bear put debit spread, a three point debit spread, roughly with a cost of about 270. Mike asks, is it best, normally best, to wait until the last week to close such positions? In this case, I'm going to say no. I don't think you're going to get it. What am I looking at here? Okay, so I entered in your ARC position as you described. Selling the 132 put, 1671. Buying the 135, 1943. Cost of debit, my math is terrible. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was 272. That's the debit on a three point spread. So the max you're expecting to make is around $28. On this position, or 10.3% of the $2.72 investment. I don't know how many uh, contracts you did, Mike, of course. That's okay. The midpoint prices right now are showing that you can close it for a higher expected profit. Don't expect to get that. Okay. You could maybe leg out of it to try to get better midpoint fills. And, and depending on the movement during the day, if it, you know, it's moving way down today, uh, in this case, well, it's a reasonable decline, I'd say five and a half percent or so. But I don't think you can get more than you expected to make. Here's the general rule of thumb. And I forgot to set the alert on this position um, when I entered it, when I first saw your email right before the webinar, Mike. If I'm at 80 to 90 percent, really 80 to 85% of the max profit on a credit spread, and I still have, or debit spread, excuse me, credit or debit spread, and I still have 15 days to go, 14 days to go, I'm, I'm going to close it now. I, I'm near max profit. Okay. I don't think this is going to turn into a loss. You know, arcs can be a little bit volatile, but you've got a good trade here on a good downward moving ETF security uh, on the arcs there. And so as a general rule, 80-20 rule. You've got 80% of the max profit. You might as well take the position out. Your comment was, is it best to wait until the last week to close such positions? Let's be honest here. You're not going to get the midpoints, I know, but you're probably going to be able to close this thing and get a profit of 27, 26 cents. You're going to be at 90, 95, 96% profit. Why not take it early? That's going to increase your annualized return, right? Now, I'm not necessarily saying you should open a new bear put debit spread on RK. But if you still have the bearish sentiment, take the profits on this one, open another structure, maybe with a higher profit that still gives you the probability you want. Absolutely. 80, 20 rule. Why wait for an extra 14 days if you're already at a 95, 96% profit on this entire position? Um, and then you said, of course, is it possible to close both positions at the same time? Is it po common to close one position, allow the other position to appreciate, assuming ARC is moving downwards? Okay. Yes, it is possible to close both at the same time, Mike. You're in a bear put debit spread, just like we would be in a bull put credit spread or a bear call credit spread. This is the parity to a bear call credit spread. You can close the options out at any time. You just do the opposite transactions. You're going to put in an order to sell to close the 17th December 135 put, buy to close the 132 put. You're going to get close to $3 back near the maximum profit you expected on this position. 14 days early. If you still think the stock has downward momentum, in this case, can you do your second idea? Can what, What's capping your gains if the stock continues down? It's the short. Okay, it's the short 132 put. That's doing what you wanted, absolutely. But in this case now, it's capping your gain. So just as we saw in that last discussion from Ben, there are opportunities here. Let's take a look at the first one. Let's go to December 17th, 132. It's already added, so I'm going to click it again. Oh, geez, but it's expensive. It's going to be about $38, $39 to buy to close this position. What am I doing? I'm just buying to close the short one leg that's profitable. Now. What happened? My break even's at 93.48, right where we are. I can make 
more profit on this position if it continues down to 91, 90, 88, 87. But again, you've only got 14 days to see that. If it starts to move back up, what happens? Be in the loss area now. That's not what you want. I'm not saying it's going to move up to 110, 115, but if it comes back up now to 95 or, 9, or 100, you're going to be losing money on this long put because the break even is right at 93.48, exactly where you are. Why is it almost exactly where you are? Because both of these options are essentially are right at intrinsic value. You're so deep in the money, they're right at intrinsic value. So this essentially just lowered your cost basis on the long put that you originally purchased essentially to intrinsic value. So your break even is almost right at where the current stock price is. That's effectively what you've done. Now have some fun. Okay. We can restructure this. Absolutely. We can buy to close our short. And if you're still bearish on the position, I just bought to close the 132. When I sell the 125, is that going to be worth it? I don't think it is. No, because it's still really close. If I paid 39 roughly to get back out of this one, and I do the 35 at 3150. Okay, I'm increasing the cost basis by $8, but now I have a 10-point spread instead of a three-point spread. So this should increase your return to about $1.80 to $2. Let's take a look. What am I doing? You close the short, and you're rolling it down to a lower strike, which has some time value. It's not fully intrinsic. Oh, you only increased it by $0.05. Cents. Rolling it down, not worth it. Rolling just the short leg down. Not worth it. Still too close to intrinsic value, only five or six cents of time premium. That's not worth hassling with in this case. Um, you could go to a lower strike, of course, but what we talk about is we start going lower and lower. If this ETF recovers, goes back up to 100 or 110, now you might be in a losing position where you still have a bit at a profit, just liquidating the bear put debit spread. I don't typically, you know, I don't typically like to go on record. <laughs> of saying one thing directly and giving you straightforward advice. But again, if I'm in a position, I'm at 95, 96, 97% of the maximum profit I expected to make on the position 14 days early, I might just liquidate the whole thing right now. What are you going to do? You're going to buy to close your 132 at 3880, roughly midpoint. And you're going to sell to close your 135 put around 41.20, I think, maybe a little bit less than that. Oh, 41.85. And you're out with a profit. Now, you're not going to get that, I don't think. Um, the midpoint is showing you some extra time premium on both options, even though they're really close to full intrinsic value. You could probably close it again, as I mentioned, for 26 of the 28 cents expected, maybe 25 of the 28 cents expected. 90, 95%, and you're taking it off the table early. You know, why not? And then if you wanted to enter into a lower strike because you still have a bearish sentiment on a ARKK, on the ARK, then that's possible too. You just roll it down. You could just roll it down also. That, is, that comment that came in there, uh, looks like from James, is you could just roll down the bear put if you still think it's going to go. So you close it, you pocket the 30 cents, Let's not call it 30 cents. Let's call it 26 cents. Okay. Your max profit was around 28. Let's call it 26 cents. You pocket right now. You're still bearish on the position. You could just roll the position down. Let's go to a safe range of, yeah, why not? 110 to 115. Buy the 115 at 2150. Sell the 110 at 16, 17, uh, 1710, 1720. Okay. So we're selling what? The 110. Keeping a five point spread instead of the three point spread now, buying the 115, whichever one floats your boat here. You got a debit of 470, but another 30 cents of profit. You pocketed the 28 or 26 cents already. That's already in your pocket. You've closed the initial spread or you've, you had to close it to roll to this spread, but now you're in another spread for another 14 days. 30 cent premium, only a 6.4% return on the position, but because we're in a five point spread here instead of the three-point spread. Or you could use lower strikes if you have a stronger bearish sentiment, maybe the 105, 108, for example, something along those lines to get a higher return closer to the initial 10% you had right now. That would be rolling, Mike, of course. 
just rolling, but it, it, it does the same actions. Excuse me. You're, you're buying to close your 132 put and selling to open, let's say the, the 105. And then you're selling to close your 135 and buying to open a 108. Okay. That would be rolling the spread down. You've pocketed the profit on the first one. Yes, you may now still lose on the next one. That's a possibility. But based on the probability you wanted to see your sentiment for RK going forward and what returns you're targeting, your initial one is around 10.3%. So maybe assume that you'd still be looking for a 10% return with a good probability you wanted. Close both by the opposite actions you opened with and then open the new debit spread. Roll both options or just close the spread and open a new spread. You can do it either application with your broker, uh, depending on what they do. If I've already made that decision, by the way, to roll a spread, I just roll each leg. I go into my portfolio, my brokers, I go into the actions menu, I go I say, I want to roll this leg. Um, so I'm going to roll actually first, excuse me, I'd roll the bought put to the lower strike and then do the short put. I think that's right. I'm trying to think of how I do it with the bull put credit spreads compared to bear put debit. What I don't want is that instant where if I'm moving this, the strikes too much, and they all of a sudden say, oh, wait, wait, whoa, no, no, no. Now you've gone from a bear put debit to a bull put credit spread, and you've got to put up this margin, even though I'm trying to go through the action of closing the other ones. A lot of brokers, I'm sure Think of Swim has it. I'm sure Interactive Brokers has it. Uh, I know E-Trade has it. I'm pretty sure Ally Financial kind of has it. It re recognizes it as spread, so I can just roll the spread. I can tell it to close this spread. And then what new legs I want for the sell to open or buy to open to go to a lower strike bear put debit spread to increase the returns and take this one as a win 14 days early. Okay, those are your options. If you want to, you know, you had mentioned closing one of the legs now, of course, to hope for a higher one if you have a bearish sentiment. Yes, you can do that. But because you're so close to intrinsic value on your initial position, I'm sorry, uh, let's go back to that. The initial position of your 132, 135 position, now that they're both so close to intrinsic value, if I just bought to close the short, my break even is going to be right equal to the current stock price on this position. You're right. You could see more profit on your remaining long option, your 135, if it continues down. But if it starts to move back up, you might see losses where you'd still be profit on the original position with a high probability, of course, as well. So again, last comment here, as I, I sort of beat this to death, but yeah, last comment here, Mike, on this one. If I'm above an 85% profit 14 days before I expected to have the full profit, I'm at 90, 95% profit, I'm probably taking it off the table. If I still have a bearish sentiment, hey, I might just buy a new put at a lower strike price based on what my sentiment is and what the costs are right now. I might enter a new bearer put debit spread if I find that if my sentiment here is, hey, I know this ETF, I've been tracking it for a long time. I still feel it's extremely bearish. I want to continue bearish plays on it. Take your profit on this one now. Go to lower strikes that match your criteria, that return that you wanted with the probability that you wanted, if that is your estimation. Of course, you could maybe do that in one step with your broker and just roll the entire spread to a new spread position. All right. So that'll cover it for Mike's question related to closing the debit spreads, the actions to close the debit spreads. Is it best to wait until the last week? Not necessarily in this case because you're at near full profit. What are you going to do if you close this position, open a new position, even still for the 17th of expiration with lower strike prices and a higher return or that 10% return you're still targeting, whether you do a three or four or five point spread, you're increasing your annualized return. You're taking the profits early on this position rather than just leaving it for another 14 days. If you choose to restructure it, maybe now you can have two winning trades over this time frame to the 17th instead of just one. And you're near full profit on this one uh, as we're nearing intrinsic value again. You won't see that higher return on the bid ask spread of getting the 12% or 11.5% at midpoint. A broker is going to force you to, to pay a little bit extra, but I think you could easily get 25, 26 cents off of this trade right now closing it for just a little bit above intrinsic in that case. Hopefully, I've never traded the ARC when it's this deep in the money, so I don't know, or the ARC-K, I should say, when it's this deep in the money, so I don't know how 
relentless the market makers are on those dollar dollar fifty two dollar bid ass spreads if they're if they really get you near the midpoint and they allow you to do that or so deep in the money now he's saying no you're going to sell at the bid like i want you to and you're going to buy at the ask and you might only get a 10 cent profit in that case I, if you're not getting it with near 90 to 95 percent put in a limit order if you're not getting the spread closed with at least 90 to 95 percent of what you expected to make that 28 cents of the max profit don't let it trigger for a market order ever. Don't let them get you only five cents of profit. Make sure that you're getting what you want and you're putting in the order correctly to get the 95% of what you expected to make because both these options are so deep in the money and so near intrinsic value. No guarantee you'll get filled. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm saying this is what I would look to do potentially in this position. This is one of the things I would look to do and then I might consider opening another one or just rolling the position down. But even with rolling down, I'm going to try to get to midpoint. If he's not budging on that, then I'll leave it alone. An example of this, um, which one was it? Um, it? It's not related to this directly. It's not related to the bear put debit spread. It's related to things that happen and things that happen in the market when you have a put that's deep in the money. And it was one of my recent positions on the fusion. Uh, portfolio for radioactive trading. I, I'm probably going to close. I'm sorry. I'm going to roll the Barry position soon. I'm going to close Ally Financial because it's not doing anything, and the put is deep in the money. And ESI, I think I'm going to do a management on as well. I know. I know. I'm showing this. That you're at the same screen right now. I'm trying to think of which one it was. Oh, there we go. Okay. So what I'm looking at here is I'm at radioactivetrading.com. I'm in the track record here for the Fusion portfolio. I'm looking at the Masco position uh, that was opened in February and closed in July. And you see here that the July, well, I had the July 16th, 65 put. And the Masco here was closed on 719 the following Monday. Now, I just spent 20 minutes, 22 minutes, I think it was. It was 21 minutes, I believe, roughly, on Ben. Telling Ben that when you're in a position, you've got this out of the money long put and following the time decay curve, you want to close when you get within 60 days to expiration. Okay. Why on earth did I hold this position? Well, actually, because I did have a call sold to June expiration. I let that expire. But why didn't I close this position right after that, knowing that whatever time value I had remaining in those last 30 days on my protective July 65 put was going to go to zero? The stock wasn't too bad. It had dropped down, I think, to 55 or 56, and I was holding the 65 foot. So it's not deep, deep in the money, but it's fairly deep in the money. But at, on Friday, it closed at 59.14. It was coming back up. I didn't want to stay in the trade. Long story short, the bid ask spreads were too wide. It was two twenty. It was a three dollar bid ask spread from the end of June, a June expiration, excuse me, all the way up to July expiration. I was not going to settle for anything less than midpoint. I held it for 30 days. If I got closed at midpoint, I would have had a 0.8 or 0.9, almost a 1% higher return after this call expired worthless. So on June 21st, that Monday following June 18th expiration, I started to try to sell to close the put. Wouldn't let me do it. Wouldn't give me the price. He wanted me to get filled at the bid price, which wasn't a positive return. It was a break even. I said, no way. If I let this get, it was a bulletproof position at this point. If I just let the put go to full expiration, I exercised my 65 put to sell Masco at 65. That yeah, was a 1.8, 1.9% profit, something along those lines. Not really the target I wanted for this trade. I should have gotten out a month earlier, uh, right around it here. Um, in any case, live and learn. I was more bullish on Masco than I should have been. I was a little bit more greedy. Long story short, I couldn't get filled. I was within that 60-day time frame. As you can obviously see, it was in 30 days because I wanted that call to expire. It gave me a nice little 80 cents. Oh, and I crossed the dividend in 614 as well. That was another reason I stayed in the position. Would have exited here for a higher profit of about 3 3 3.5%. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Wouldn't fill. Wouldn't fill. Wouldn't fill. I kept trying almost every day, adjusting the order, keeping it right at midpoint, seeing where the prices change, getting it to midpoint didn't get filled. So I had to hold it to expiration to get the full profit instead of only maybe a break-even 0.2, 0.3% profit on the position. 
So again, why am I bringing this up? It's just because it's a possibility, Mike, you might experience the same thing on the ARK K deep in the money puts as we're getting closer to expiration. We saw a bid ask spread of around, you know, that that $2 bid ask spread, what uh 220 bid ask spreads between the strikes 37 I think it was to 3920 and so forth. You might not get filled at midpoint. But I try it. That's what I would probably do since you're already near 90. If you get midpoint, you're 95, 96, 97% of the profit you expected 14 days early. I just take that now. You can hold it to expiration, but if when you're this high of a profit, why not take it off the excuse me, why not take it off the table in that case? All right. Yes, to answer your other question, you can close both positions at the same time. Just do the opposite transaction. Your broker may even have an option just to close the spread position. You know, it's a closed leg. I know this is the power options portfolio. Um, let me go to position actions here. I can roll the individual leg. Um, I can close the individual leg or I can go to close the position. Your broker might have the same individual choices if they're recognizing it as a spread position or just close the leg. You're going to be doing the opposite transaction. You're going to be buying to close the 132 put that you sold to open and you're going to be selling to close the 135 put that you bought to open. Put in the limit order near to the midpoint price. Give it 10, 15, 20 minutes. If it doesn't fill, maybe adjust it a little bit, but don't adjust it too much. You're fighting here to make 28 cents. If you're not getting, honestly, if he's not letting you get filled at this time, at at least where you'd have a profit, excuse me, of $25 per contract or 25 cents per contract, 26 or 27, then yeah, I hate to say it, do what I did with Masco. Keep trying. Don't let him, don't let them fill you out in a position that's this deep in the money on a winning debit spread where you're only going to take. $10 of profit instead of 28. Why? No. You want closer to this 90, 95% profit with these deep in the monies. So go for that midpoint. Try to get it filled at the midpoint as best you can to exit. If it's not happening, it's not happening. It sucks. <laughs> Lack of a better term, but that's the key to keep trying. But if you've decided to maybe roll down, as we mentioned, Mike, try to look for a position for the same cycle, 14 days out. That has that around 10, 10 and a half percent return you're looking for with the probability you want, maybe roll both legs down using the function at your broker to roll the spread to those lower strikes. You still have a bearish sentiment. You pocket one winning trade effectively. Still, you're trying to get filled at midpoints on all four transactions, technically closing this spread, both legs of this spread, and opening two legs of another spread because you still have the bearish sentiment here. You've been following RK. Uh, just still try to get the midpoints. Don't just go in a market order because then you see you might not even make a profit on this position. And your next position might not give you the prices you want to get the 10.3% profit that you wanted. I know you know that. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself. I kind of am. But it's extremely important to not just go in at the market order, to go in with the limit orders and try to get the midpoint as best as possible, especially when you're this deep in the money. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't see any more questions here in the queue um, posted by anyone. But if anyone has any last-minute questions, any last-minute topics that you want to discuss, go ahead and send this to us. We can stay online for another 10, 15 minutes. That's perfectly fine. Um, now, of course, if not, then uh, that's okay, too. We can maybe go ahead and uh, wrap up a little bit early here. So while we're waiting... If any last minute questions come in, I'll just go ahead and, and start doing that right now. But please feel free, not, not shutting us down right now, but please feel free to go ahead and uh, send any other remaining questions that you might have that we would want to cover. But until then, I just want to remind everyone, of course, today that today's material on my thoughts and your questions designed for educational purposes, increasing investing performance and options knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct recommendations or suggestions. We didn't really look at the search. and <laughs> We didn't really look to find new trades on the very powerful patented search tool or talk about criteria in that case. But again, you know, these are trading suggestions, talking about rolling some positions. And then we talked about uh, the beginning structure there uh, for Len um, with his discussion on the bull put credit spreads. And we're not saying to trade MU. That's where we're going here. Options, as we saw, do involve risk and may not be suitable for all investors. But hey, it looks like we had uh, two really 
two so far successful trades. Mike's near full 95% profit on his bear put debit. Ben was at a 50% profit on his still now out of the money put option on DIA. We saw some good ideas there on how to manage those positions. You like some of the tools that you saw today? Hey, we got to look at the profit and loss chart a little bit. We looked at the portfolio tools and how we would use those to analyze our positions, see rollout opportunities, and much more. Remember, that plus the patented search tool and 23 strategies we didn't look at today. But you can take a free trial at any time. Just go to PowerOp.com, put in your name and email address. No credit card is required. 14-day free trial. Use the patented search tools, create your own searches. You can use about three months of the historical back testing, access to the portfolio tools, set the alerts, evaluate rollout opportunities, stock repair tools, other signature tools, and much, much more. No credit card, 14 day access. After that, the monthly subscription starts at only $45 per month using end of day data. Uh, of course, we do have the delayed data service at only $65 per month, where you're getting Delay, delay data, 12 to 15 minutes delayed. There is, of course, a real-time service and full access to the history, which includes about seven to eight years of backtesting data. We mentioned this earlier uh, for the discussion there on the eight ways to manage the profitable long call that Ben might want to take a look through and the eight ways to manage a bull put credit spread that we talked about with Len at the beginning of the conversation a little bit. You can go to the archived webinars page at any time. Just go to powerop.com slash webinars.asp. If you're not a member, it's a public page. Or as we saw, you can just go to the YouTube channel, go into the video section there. There's a little magnifying glass search feature. You can search for uh, discussions on credit spreads, debit spreads, buy calls, diagonal spreads, poor man's covered call. You'll see a list of our recent videos and most popular videos related to those topics. You can check those out at any time. Well, I did not see any other questions come in live. So if you do think of any other questions later on, perhaps over the weekend, send me an email at any time to support powerop.com or to support at radioactivetrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. Of course, trial members and subscribers, you can always schedule one of those free coaching sessions. This is essentially a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie. We will walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions that you had just like today, but it's more of a one-on-one -on -one session. We can use GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar if you prefer to do that to see our screens. Most of the coaching sessions are just done uh, via phone call or the phone call as well.